Ego India project. Um, I am also um, very passionately supporting the cause of uh, women in astronomy and women in science in general. I am also a member of a uh, working group for gender equity of the Astronomical Society of India. So I am Shukanda Mollik. I am a PhD student here. So in the fourth year, I am working on uh, simulating a galaxy in a computer. So uh, I am very, very passionate about uh, singing. So I have been trained classically. So that's it. Hello, everyone. My name is Sanjit Mitra. I'm a professor here. I work on uh, gravitational wave LIGO India. I'm also the project coordinator for LIGO India at Ayuga. Hello. 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 How you can hear? Uh, hi everyone, I am Anuprita More. Uh, I am a scientist here. I work on gravitational lensing and gravitational waves. And I am very excited to see, see here that there are a lot of young students who are interested in uh, knowing about the role of women in science and how women can contribute more in astronomy. Thank you. Hello everyone. Um, my name is Siddharth Maharana. Um, I am currently a postdoctoral researcher at uh, Institute of Astrophysics in Heraklion in Greece. Um, till last year, I was a PhD student here in Ayuka, and I did my PhD here. My primary work on developing instruments for telescopes to carry out interesting observations. Yeah, that's what I primary do. Hello, everyone. Uh, I am Vishal Upendran. I'm a final year graduate student here at Ayuka. I, my research interests are generally on sun, so I study the sun and various aspects of it through observations, uh, computer modeling, and machine learning. I am also very much interested in science outreach, so I'm a part of uh, I'm, a, I'm a part of the editorial team of an outreach co organization called Cosmic Varta. So very pleased to meet you. So along with the panel members, it will be me, Manasa Devi. I am a scientist with the LIGO India project at Ayuka. Um, so to begin with, we'd like to give you certain statistics um, that show that women are equally good in science and are made to belong in science. Uh, I invite Professor Sanjit Mitra to come and uh, give his talk. Okay, uh, you can hear me loud, right? Okay, first of all, let me ask you. So, you know, we are discussing uh, men and women here, okay? And I see that there are a lot of uh, young students here. So, let me ask you some questions, okay? And then we will see, got into the cause for why such things are happening. So, suppose there are some uh, you know, there are exams happen at, uh, like in class 10 level, class 12, etc. And there are many subjects, okay? Let's say there are some language sub oriented subjects, let's say English, French, German, etc. And then there are these subjects like maths, physics, etc. So now tell me, in which subjects do you think men or boys perform better? What is your guess? Students, yes, science. science. That is maths, physics, right? Okay. And which subjects do you think girls do better? Arts. Girl? Arts. arts. Somebody saying arts. So students will also say, girls, what do you think? Where do you think that girls do better and boys do better? Science. Say, say, say clearly. There is nothing like right or wrong. So many of the answers I will tell you, I just learned today to, to, when I was preparing for this talk. That is possible, but then we're talking about small children who are like, you know, they, they have not get into the household thing. I'm not giving any answers yet. Okay, I think more or less, People would be thinking probably that you know this is the kind of the answer that uh, students, the boys would be better in like maths and physics, and girls will be better in uh, let's say languages and so on, right? Okay, so this is let's see how it goes. But let me first give you a statistics, and this is pretty alarming. 
Okay? This is what we want to address. Uh, these statistics I have got from different newspapers and also uh, you know, uh, reputed journals, but then they may not be exact. There may be some pluses and minuses here and there. I Okay, oh, you cannot see probably. So see, this, this number typically shows the fraction of women in science, in STEM subjects, that is science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, okay? You see that biology tops in terms of the proportion of women, it's 26, chemistry 11, physics 13, math 16, computer science 12, engineering 9, and art sciences 14, okay? This is the picture in India, and this is not much different from US and UK. There are some proportional, in the first two, biology and chemistry, they are doing little better, but otherwise, physics, for example, which is one of our primary research areas, things are absolutely in bad shape, okay? Maybe some improvement has happened. Uh, I mean, I don't know how old this is, but this is, uh, this, this uh, interestingly, this article came today in the te Telegraph. So I got it from today's newspaper, so this would not be too old. Now, uh, okay, many students are coming, so let's give a minute. But, but the point here is that this is, this is not how it is supposed to be. And if we are seeing this, there must be some cause and let's analyze it and then address it, right? This is how you would approach the problem. So let's see where the problem can happen, okay? And some of the, and then we will get into the discussion after we identify, we, I give you basically the broad idea that where the primary problem is, and then we can have a lot more discussion on that. Now, let me come back to this uh, question I asked a little bit before, okay? This is, the CBSE class 12th results in 2015, right? The, this purple one is for m female, the orange one is for male, and let's see that I asked some things like, uh, let's say, uh, in uh, languages, okay, German, French, etc. okay? Surprisingly, male students did better there, okay? English is a bit different thing. Let's not get into that. And let's come to the most important one, physics and mathematics. What do you see? Girls did better than uh, boys, right? So this is how it is, right? So, <clears throat> so the point is that, that I will come to this in the end of the talk, of this small presentation that the problem, the primary problem which we'll see is that, that most young girls believe that boys do better in science. And this belief has a problem, so we'll come to that. Now you see that, uh, now, now you, you will see that well, maybe in secondary and uh, at 10, 12 level, students do well, girls do well, and then they don't enroll for higher education. That is not correct. So this is the, these are the numbers, you see that the numbers are almost the same, and percentage-wise, actually, the enrollment ratio is in higher education is better for women than men in India. It's slightly better, but it is still more. So clearly, girls not enrolling for higher education is not the problem. They are not performing at class 10 or 12 level in maths and science is not the problem. These two are ruled out, and we are not going to discuss this. This is not the thing. Now, what is then the cause which is often uh, cited? So that is what is often in, in literature said is that there is something called the variability hypothesis. The variability hypothesis says that on the average, men and women perform equally, but then the distribution has a higher variance for men, that is, that is, more men perform much better than the whole population, and in the same uh, uh, evaluation, some men would do much worse than the others, even though they can do better in life in other ways. So basically, there will be more men in the higher, like, outstanding part, and there will be uh, more also in the outstandingly bad part. That balances out, 
Now, what happens is that because the uh, science, research, etc., is driven by these outliers, then clearly men would do better. This hypothesis is wrong. And this is actually written by the same paper, same person, okay, who did the full analysis and showed that why this is wrong. And this is a distribution from 1.6. Uh, so they did this, I mean, I can read through this, but that will, you will get bored, so I will tell you what exactly is happening here. So there is 1.6 million students' data they considered, the grades of those students. You see, blue is for men, and uh, this red one is for women. You see that systematically, the average is better for women. But it is also true that the variance is larger. But then how do you know that whether variance is going to play the bigger role or the average? Because on the average, girls do better. But then there is this average, I mean, the, the, there are these outliers for men. Maybe that will overtake. So they did a simulation. And the simulation showed this, OK? That basically, the performance is very much the same for men and women. There is absolutely no bias there. That is, the intelligence that we have when we are born, plus the education system through which we go through, all together, do not have any significant effect on this. So this is what is plotted here. I mean, many of you would not understand how the plots work. But all I can tell you is that if you take the top 10% performers in, uh, let's say, STEM subject, that is science, technology, etc., there, the performance of men and women based on those grades is basically identical. OK? You cannot absolutely cannot explain that why there are less than 20% women in science in, in these areas like physics, etc., with this explanation. So the explanation, they also say in the conclusion, is something deep, something inbuilt in our society, the, the way we treat people, and psychology. Okay, And that is where we will get into. But this is my last slide. After that, we will get into more uh, this thing. The thing is that there was a survey which was done among six-year-old girls and boys. Six-year-old, okay, they have no idea about anything else. But they were asked if they think that the smartest people in the world could be girls or boys. They did not think that the girls, six-year-old girls did not think that girls can be the smartest people in the world. But boys did. And this is where the bias is coming. So, the girl, so we have to give this feeling to the girls that there is absolutely no reason for them to feel that they are somehow in any way behind uh, boys. Okay? But what happens is that through conversation, so different aspects which we will discuss now, this idea becomes engraved in your mind. The, 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 that idea is the biggest problem here. And there are many other things which are given in Wikipedia, for example. You can go through it. Uh, but I will not take more time. But the, the message I, we wanted to give you in this first part of the discussion is that this whole thing about intelligence, education, these, that, all those things are absolutely minor. Okay? There may be some minor differences here and there. But let's not worry about it. Let's focus on the problems which are the real problems, which are societal and psychological. Okay? I'll stop here. Thank you, Sanjit. So we'll take forward our discussion today based on um, we heard some statistics. Um, so clearly, there is no bias in our education system. Uh, there is no bias. Uh, there is there's nothing wrong with our brains, right? And then, uh, but, and the passion for science is also unbiased. I see equal number of men and women in the population, equal number of girls and boys in the population. So um, we want to see a future where women are strong enough to see themselves in a career in science. And that's what we'll start our panel discussion with. Um, so my daughter is six years old. And I asked her to make a picture of a doctor, teacher, scientist, construction worker, and a nurse. And this is what she drew. 
So you can see her doctor is a male because her pediatrician is a male. And the nurse in the hospital is a female. So the nurse is a female character. And the construction worker is a male. Her teacher is a female because her teacher is a female person in, in school. She's only come across female teachers in school. And scientist, she drew two. My husband is also a scientist and I am also. So she didn't miss me out. She's six years old. I try to keep her away from all these gender biases as much as possible. And I think parents these days are trying hard to do that in spite of the society giving you different notions of this is how a gender uh, stereotype is. Um, and this is what I get even after that. <laughs> so gender stereotypes is something that we need to really work on. And that comes from uh, the girls within themselves, the implicit biases we have, and from the support system for the girls in science. And how are we going to break stereotypes? And how do we prove and build the confidence in women and girls that they belong in science. Um, so I'll ask one of you to start the discussion. Devarati? Hello. Yeah. Okay. Um, thank you very much for these uh, very insightful um, slides, which uh, start off this uh, very debate about um, why we think that this is a very inherent feature of our society that we have this bias about um, men and women being made differently. This is definitely not the case. So I will just uh, share a couple of um, 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 researches that I had um, learned about. So one is from one of my colleagues in Brazil who conducted a widespread survey about uh, the career paths of women and exactly at what point they think that women are cr uh, quitting careers in physics. And interestingly, they made a survey and they showed that these numbers uh, have a leakage effect. So basically, the numbers beginning in school and colleges, the interest among girls to be in science is still there. But as they progress in career, so the career options become narrower because there's more competition. And then there is uh, mobility, geographical mobility, intellectual mobility. You have to go from one field to another. You have to move. Um, even if you have a family, you have to move. You have to think of, make um, important decisions as to where you want a family, as to where you want to move to a different country for having postdoctoral careers and so on. And there is this leakage effect where uh, as you progress in career from uh, PhD to postdoc, and then uh, you hit the glass ceiling where there is um, the recruitment of women involved. And this is where there is extremely hard competition. So this is the point where where women start to decrease in numbers. There was also one very interesting survey conducted by CNRS in France, where uh, there was a master's project tracking the lives of women who are in this career. And they were actually following them and seeing at what point in their career they are dropping off. And they very much agree to this leakage effect. So this is something I wanted to say that um, these are, there are many surveys being conducted like this. And it looks like this effect starts to kicking later. Although uh, here we are discussing other things like uh, the societal effects and psychological effects, but I also want to say we also want to keep in mind these kind of factors where there are difficulties women face later in life where they have to make a choice whether or not they want to co continue in this career. And uh, this is also a point where these numbers start to drop. Um, maybe someone wants to continue with. Hello. Hello. Uh, yeah, so maybe I will bring a slightly different angle uh, compared to what Devrati just mentioned. So, um, yeah, talking about like breaking the stereotypes, um, 
the you know as you know like charity begins at home and uh, many of the things that sanjit also mentioned like it's not the necessarily the education system um that uh, is playing a role here but it's also how we are raising our children how we are raising girls and boys that plays a very uh, important and subconscious role in the the confidence like uh, as everyone has been talking about the the fact that even very young girls and young boys they seem to have a slightly different opinion about themselves and uh, people belonging to the other gender right and this comes from this implicit bias which is there in the parents in the people the family friends and everyone around you who are day, each and every day each and every time are making these um unconscious suggestions uh by small actions through small actions that overall leads to this belief in 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 each individual that somehow i am belonging to this one gender and somehow my choices my interests my likes and dislikes are in this way which are going to be different from the other gender so these kind of things are starting to the, i i also have a very young daughter and i have also seen uh, some things that she ends up saying which i am i find very surprising uh, when she says that she likes the pink color uh, which like i have never tried to buy any clothes for her that are of pink color necessarily or are very uh, feminine looking uh, so to say Uh, but it also like becomes really difficult if i'm going to go uh, like if i'm going to uh, buy some items for my daughter for example like buying a school bag or a water bottle even those have these gender differences like uh, if they will ask like is it for a girl or a boy like why a water bottle or a school bag needs to have difference for a girl and a boy so these are the like small things that we do every day these bring uh, these you know these impinge uh, this kind of notion that somehow girls and boys are different in terms of their likes and dislikes it is true that there are certain there are certain uh, generic or there are certain qualities that are can be generalized between girls that they may like certain things uh, but but that does not that should not be so much so that it leads to a completely uh, uh, different um, career profession that they end up choosing in their own life right and and so there are many such incidences where we are always hearing in the house it is automatically that things that are to be done in a household it is automatically that it's a girl's job or a girl should learn or the fact that she is learning to how to uh, make roti or something oh how wonderful but that's not something that we ever talk about when it, when, it's a, when there's a boy in the picture right and so these are these small things that we have to um, pay attention to and these are the small things that we have to uh, make sure that we are teaching not only to a girl but also to boy to remind them that these differences should not be there and that a boy is no different from a girl and vice versa so these are so yeah this is the point like to to be aware as a parent as a guardian as a school teacher uh, school uh, whoever authority to be uh, aware of this fact that th like even when i when i listen to some of the teachers giving uh, like explaining certain concepts they will say you know what when your mom makes uh, rice at home or when you when, when your mom is cooking in the kitchen why does it have to be a mom always cooking in the kitchen so even like these examples when they are explaining certain concept the examples that are given are also these stereotypical examples when your when when your dad is driving a car or when your when your dad is repairing something these kind of examples are used always to explain certain concepts or teach something to the children and these again they they impinge the same uh, the bias that women and men are different and they have different uh, necessary responsibilities or skills uh, again we all are individuals and we have different skills we we have different likes and dislikes uh, and there should not be these kind of bias is such that overall if you look at a huge population then that one gender somehow is given less opportunities uh, is given um, is somehow uh, not uh, given yeah given the opportunity to to be in a certain field or not considered to be skilled enough to uh, to be chosen uh, to continue to uh, work in that field so i'd like to listen to the male perspective of this so 
you grew up in a society and I, I know you are really proactive against breaking these gender stereotypes from your side as well. So how, what would you address to the male population or the boys, young boys growing up? How do they get rid of this stereotype and see women equal to them in any field or any career of their choice? I mean, I can only speak from my personal experience about what, um, uh, yeah. So, I mean, it's there. I mean, of course, all of us know. And be, being a guy, I also know that. So, what I try to do from my personal viewpoint is, first of all, it's. I think it's very hard to identify the biases being a guy. I think that's the first step. It's usually not so easy to identify. But once I identify something, probably the idea is to see if I can do my bit about it. So for example, when Anupita was saying, why should only girls cook or boys drive? So for example, in, the, in my house, for example, now I've learned cooking. <laughs> so I cook as much as probably my wife does. And um, so those kind of things. And also, as a scientist who also works with many female collaborators, and that as brilliant as male collaborators, right? A lot of questions or a lot of opinions that, for example, I would form about a colleague. Sometimes I ask myself, OK, would I have made this, ask the same question if it was a guy? Right? So for example, how we assess somebody as a good scientist or not, or a good, for example, a project student comes, and you want to assign a project, and you identify, OK, how smart is this person? Will he be capable or not? Or she be capable or not? So sometimes I make ask myself this question: Would I be have the same question or the same opinion if it was the other gender? And surprisingly, I found that I'm biased in many ways. <laughs> so it takes a lot of effort for a male. Or in this case, I'm talking about a male, but in any overprivileged class, I mean, it can be rich versus poor. I didn't asking the question like, would my opinion or my action be same if? this information was not given to me. I think that's, I think, one way in which I try to at least contribute in the way I can. And that has been both uh, a challenge to identify that, um, but it's also very, very enlightening as well. Yeah, that's where. So adding to Sudhat's point, so, so as you said, it's difficult to identify. So there, is, there are certain things we do, the certain things we say or way we behave. So let's say you are talking about, let's say I'm talking about science with some of my female friends. So some of my colleagues here. So am I cutting them off when they're saying something? That's the first thing. So generally I speak too much. So only Sanjitha can shut me up. <laughs> so that's generally what happens. So I, it, it occurs. So sometimes I just shut everybody up. I keep speaking. But uh, as you grow older also and you start seeing things properly, so we are not you're not, you're not kids, right? We are starting to see things from a new lens. And we see that, you know, see if a girl is speaking, so she's generally being, you know, Are, ha, ha, yeah, yeah, right, you're, you're correct, but somebody will interject. Why do you want to do that? Like if the guy was, if some guy was speaking, or I am making the same point, this happens to me. So uh, whenever I do science outreach, it occurs all the time. So if the, I tell the girl, like, you do the outreach, I'm just going to stand here because you can speak this thing. You know the demonstration. Just do it. But they start speaking and then the teacher or somebody, anybody in the crowd, they start to uh, interject. Why would you do that? If I'm speaking, you're not doing it, right? So, and sometimes some things we don't even, we don't even realize. So I am very fortunate that I have good friends who tell me, you know, uh, so these are things we gently face. And then I go and reevaluate. So have I done this thing any time in, in my, uh, as, I, as I converse, as I interact with, uh, with women? So sometimes it's yes. But thankfully, it's not, it's not it's a very like a minuscule fraction uh, from what my friends tell me. So that's pretty nice. But one thing I learned was to just observe and not judge. So we generally, when we are interacting with anybody, we tend to just first judge. And then we listen to what they are saying. So we first form an opinion and then some hypothesis. Are yeah, this guy is like this, this woman is like this. And then you start putting all the data. Let's not do that. Just listen to what they are saying, just observe them. And then you take a call as to what you want to respond to that person. So, so we slow down. So that is something I've realized it works very well. 
that you know, I'm able to listen to them and then I make an informed decision. Sometimes I don't want to respond at all because I don't know what to respond. You can, you can be in that situation also. So from a guy's perspective, I think that slows us down and that lets the girl finish or the, or the lady finish what, what she wants to say. And then we are able to listen and then give a response, which then drives the conversation forward in a very nice manner. It's, it's not just some lame conversation we are having. It's a very deep conversation we have. So that is something I have noticed. I just can add a few points that I have an elder brother uh, in my home. So uh, when I was little, I never know that I was a girl. So my parents never treat me like a girl or treat my brother like a boy. So outside world, I sometimes get that kind of uh, notion that you should study biology or something. But in the home, I was always said like that you also have to earn for yourself. You have to uh, study as hard as your brother. So I think that things help me. So I never knew that there is a gender bias inside my home. So when I actually interacted to the outside society, I was really surprised. So, oh, achha, why should I be different from my brother? So that thing actually helped me. So I have some friends uh, who has faced severe uh, I mean, difficulties for being a girl student, but uh, Luckily, I have not. So I hope that kind of future for every girl in my country or in the world. I think I agree with all the panel members that stereotypes, if you break them at home, then at least it rises in the minds of the young children when they see something different outside. And they at least have the opportunity to question why is it different and why it should be different. Um, yes, please. Uh, so I'll add some uh, funny anecdote to this. So uh, there was one survey which identified, so this bias, that societal bias we're talking about is very deep, right? Even I as a woman don't realize when I'm doing a discrimination against a girl. This is extremely deep. So they were trying to find uh, several of these, uh, how deep these are, and they made a survey of the literature that we read as a child. So it's really funny. So we grew up on fairy tales where girls are being saved by princes and things like that, which make us think like, oh, we can't defend for ourselves. We have to wait for somebody to come in. So funnily, there was one panel which actually rewrote these stories from the point of view of a, a girl being the savior. And it was really funny, the reaction. Even I was shocked to read them, because how deep is our you know, bias about these? They even wrote this Indiana Jones kind of story where the woman is a scientist and goes out in the world. She writes letters to her daughter, and she's always away, and the father takes care. So how shocking it, is it for us to listen to something? I mean, so I think we have to pay attention, really, to identify at what point like we imbibe these biases. Like, from the very literature we are reading, the stories we are reading and everything that gives us this picture of the distinction between men and women, right? So, yeah. Thank you for that point. So, um, moving forward, I think we have a couple of more points to discuss, so we'll just um, push through following. We can discuss this all day. Um, but uh, the second point that has a serious impact is the visibility of role models and mentors for uh, young girls as they grow up. And there are several studies, this is just one of them, that when uh, the young girls get to interact with a future themselves that they're envisioning to be, then the, the, it has a really positive effect and builds up so the implicit biases break. Um, so I'd like to ask the panel members if they've had any role models or if they've acted as role models, uh, which has inspired anyone. Can I suggest yes. something, like, if it's fine? Yes. So maybe we can ask them uh, to name a couple of scientists, a famous scientists, like men and women, and how quickly they answer. Can we start from that? <laughs> I don't know if it's, you can try. it's going to take some time. So three scientists. I think we've tried that three. a couple of times, and I've been disappointed. So I didn't want to bring it up this time. <laughs> <laughs> sure, then we can, we can proceed. That's fine, yeah. Yes, 
Yes, so I, I sort of wanted to allude to that. So uh, policies are being made to make role models more visible, especially as things have improved a lot. We, women gain more visibility now and equal visibility, I won't say more visibility, equal visibility as men when they br make breakthroughs. Um, but we see all this in the newspaper, but a role model for yourself, someone you have interacted with, a mentor for you, that plays a very crucial role in seeing yourself in the future, how you want to look at yourself in the future. Um, yes. I, I think, uh, uh, sorry, can you hear? I think many of you, I can, I can. I, I guess uh, many of you must be uh, many of you must be watch, watching the uh, T20 Women World Cup. I don't know how many of you watched. Now, the, the matches were, of course, very exciting, and unfortunately, we just lost in an unfortunate way. But the thing is that there was a lack of role models for cricketers, right, in the country. But still, several, the whole team came up, and then they played a wonderfully well. So I think even though there is a lack of role models, just because by, by, by the love for the subject or, the, or whatever it is, people can get motivated as long as there is support from surrounding. That people, you always don't hear the negative things. This kind of thing, if you start hearing, then of course you will get demotivated. But I am very sure the parents of those cricketers did provide positive support. So I've heard from um, young girls who are in college uh, because they hear about this work-life balance all the time. But then until they come to see a person who is really handling the work-life balance and seeing how it really is in real life, that makes a lot of difference because it's your future. It's not something that we've been through. And if you see biases, how you deal with, how, how have people dealt with it and came through successfully. So that really matters a lot. Uh, so have you had any mentors who have helped you or at least like push through all the barriers in the past? Okay, I can also add a few things to this. So this is something that is, uh, I have myself seen very often. So um, uh, exactly like you said, your daughter drew these pictures, right? So this is something because she has seen these images in front of her and had this idea in the head. So myself also, so I remember when I was um, in master, so I, I talked my university, a lot of girls came to me and said, uh, oh, we are very proud to have a woman gold medalist. And I remember from that year on, every year we had a woman topping. So that means that there was this bias that women cannot be heading the university uh, in physics. And then when this happened, so there, it was like something possible. And and then women push through it, right? So we need to have these role models. So I was also an ambassador for science, and also now that I'm doing like India outreach, I see all, we when we showcase women like like Mansa and um, like Anuprita. So there are women who come forward to us, talk to us, and say, okay, what are the fields are you studying? I would like to do the same. I would like to be like you. So this definitely helps because uh, you, when you have a role model who has um, surpassed these obstacles and stood up for themselves, that gives courage to women. So we definitely need to uh, portray these. So now thanks to social media and so on, women can actually identify such role models. And we are also ha organizing these kind of uh, mentoring sessions and so on, where these young girls can ask questions on how to overcome these kind of obstacles that they face. So I think this is something I have definitely seen for myself is very important. Um, yeah, so. So next is uh, the role of family and society. So usually for a woman to succeed, she needs a support system. Even for a man to say, I don't think anybody can do it by themselves. You need a support system. And the support system for a woman is very different from the support system for a man. And uh, usually, the woman has to either become a superwoman, try to do everything all by herself, uh, or she has to fight against gender biases within the family itself, or she has to make personal compromises. 
oh, I should probably leave this, let this be, and then move forward. Um, so these are the three choices that she usually has. And as Sukanya mentioned, her family has never seen a bias inside, she's never seen a bias inside the family, and they've been a very strong support system. And I think moving forward also, uh, it is important that the pressure on the woman to maintain the work-life balance doesn't rest only on her, but the support system helps it. And I'd like to ask the panel members, how can the support system help a woman get through this instead of her being forced to become a superwoman or forced to fight her own war all by herself? Um, so, uh, maybe I can just talk about uh, one change that I'm seeing in, uh, in the, over the last few years uh, of being in this field. Um, that um, when, um, as a, as when I was a PhD student and I was attending conferences and going here and there, at that time I did not have my own family or a child and so on. Uh, and those, those are the times when people were still talking about these issues and uh, there was not as much awareness about these issues. And uh, at the time I, have, I had not seen, I means during that period I had not seen that many conferences, for example, where there would be support for, um, uh, like child support, like to, if to, to enable families where the husband and the wife both are scientists and they have a child, uh, to have some facility to take care of the child so that both the husband and wife can attend the conference, can give uh, talks, can be engaged in uh, scientific discussions and so on. But over the last few years, I am seeing this, uh, this awareness uh, being there more and more, uh, not just globally, but also it is starting in India. I am seeing that there are certain conferences where they do make uh, such facilities facilities available, uh, there is some support to take care of the child, there is also some sort of funding available at times to uh, allow uh, for families to travel and uh, to, to make sure that the women are, don't have to compromise in these kind of situations and that they can, uh, they can also uh, contribute, uh, be there and make, their, uh, make themselves visible and uh, engage in scientific discussions and so on uh, without having to worry about this other aspect which should not have been only the women's responsibility to first in the first place. So I'll probably ask a question to the women panelists here. So what sort of support would you expect like from your parents, from your spouse, from, the, from your extended family, let's say? What sort of things make your life easy? Is it some things that maybe we do make, to make your life difficult, so you can tell that, and things that you, you would expect that, you know, if, if these things are, are, there's somebody to take care, or somebody to, you know, take the, share the burden, it makes it very easy for you. So could we have some examples from you? It's like Anupreta ma'am gave an example. So some other examples from you people. So, um, I'll give my own example. Um, so, when I moved to India, um, we had a very small baby. My parents were there with me for five months to take care of the baby and get back to the job. And then five months later, my, I don't want to trouble my parents. They have uh, with small children. So I called my spouse back. I told him to quit his job. He quit his job. I didn't tell him to quit his job. He quit his job. And then he came back and he was taking care of the baby at home while I went for work. He didn't have a job. And this seemed startling to the entire population. Like whoever came across this, Everybody was startled, telling, you quit your job and came back to take care of a kid at home. And I think that's the wrong sort of impression that the society gives to the male gender. The child is equally his and mine, right? And the society looking at it differently uh, makes you feel that you've done something wrong. And that should not be imposed on women that they've done something wrong, should not made, uh, be made to feel the guilt of having the father at home. That sort of a thing happened multiple times, multiple encounters that had happened. Um, and it's equally, so we had decided whoever gets the job first goes first and the other comes over. So it, it, if I had, if he had come over and then I had quit a job, nobody would ask a question. Nobody would have asked, turn the heads behind and see anything surprising. It would have been the norm. But why 
was it abnormal to see it the other way around? And that sort of vision has to change. Okay, so um, I get this question very often. So whenever I say, okay, I am a professor and uh, so I have uh, these achievements, so immediately I get the question, so are you married? How many, questions, how many children do you have? So it doesn't matter how many publications, how many awards I have, but very funnily, when we talk about women scientists in India and uh, what women have achieved in India, then how many women do we quote? So nobody is asking those kind of questions, like how many women, I mean all women are not born to be child bearers. There are also women who have to take the country forward. I mean why do, they, why we, why do we put these things in the head of children and, or in a question a woman who is trying to achieve something in science? Uh, these are two separate things, a personal life and an academic life is very different, right? So uh, I mean I, I would say this is also a very, very, and uh, interestingly, nobody asked me this question ever, <laughs> that are you married and how many children you have? So that I think is quite understandable. There is a difference in the society about this. But in general, I just wanted to add. One question. Yes, go ahead. Uh, can, uh, can somebody bring the mic? Yeah. Concentration, yeah. I, I will just say one thing. It is also not just male, boys and girls. Uh, why, just one thing. I just want to mention one thing. So since we are only discussing about girls, it is not just about girls and boys. To me, what feels the most important thing is freedom. As soon as you get freedom, then you can and the support accordingly. You know, only freedom does not mean that you will be able to reach some, uh, achieve something. This problem is there also for boys, because family expects something from the boys and they are pushed in that direction. Similarly, family expects something from the girls and they are pushed in that direction. This freedom is lacking in for both men and women. And I think freedom and corresponding support is what actually is necessary. Yeah, sorry. Please go ahead. English, uh, पण जेवढा तुम्ही बोलला मला हेवढं कळालं की मुलींनी वगैरे गर्ल्स सायन्स घेऊ शकतात आणि त्याचा खूप उपयोगी पण होतं पण जिथं मी वस्तीमध्ये राहते मला हा शिक्षण तेवढं हेवढं पडत नाही म्हणजे मी जिथं वस्तीमध्ये राहते आम्हाला शिक्षण हा अवघड पडतो मग तुम्ही हा तुम्ही जे बोलला तुम्ही मला शिक्षण जेवढं तुम्ही इंग्लिश फार बोलला आम्हाला खूप कळालं मग तुम्ही येऊ शकता का मग आमच्या इथं वस्तीमध्ये आम्हाला शिकवायला आय इल एक्सप्लेन शी इज माय स्टुडंट वी आर फ्रॉम द एन जी ओ विच इज वर्किंग फॉर द स्ट्रीट किड्स अँड अंडर प्रिव्हिलेज द पर्सन द किड्स हु आर सॉरी हाँ द द किड्स हु आर बेगर्स ऑन द स्ट्रीट्स और दो दो स्ट्रेन और ट्राइबल्स एरिया और अंडर प्रिविलेज एरिया सो शी थिंक्स कि हमारे यहाँ पर स्कूल सीखना ही बहुत डिफिकल्ट है और साइंस कहाँ से लेंगे हम और अगर आप जैसे मतलब प्रोफेसर्स इनको पढ़ाने वहाँ पर आते हैं सो शी थिंक्स कि वो आगे बढ़ पाएगी बिकॉज जहाँ पर ये रहते हैं वहाँ पर ये खुद ही कुछ ऐसी चीज़ें हर रोज़ करते हैं जिससे साइंस पता चलता है सो उसको ऐसे लगता है कि आप वहाँ पर उसको उनको पढ़ाने के लिए आना चाहिए थैंक यू This is a really nice question and I would like to tell that we have a small science center uh, here at Ayuka and we always get these questions and we actually go to such centers. I am saying that you have a small science center in Ayuka. There are posters in the outside, there are also posters in the outside, there are also email ID. तो त्याच्यावर तुम्ही ईमेल करू शकता किंवा आत्ता जिथे वॉल जितके व्हॉलेंटियर्स आहेत त्यांना भेटून तुमच्या शाळेचं किंवा संस्थेचं नाव लिहून देऊ शकता आम्ही नक्की तुमच्याकडे येऊ कारण आम्ही अंडप्लिव्हिलेज ठिकाणांमध्ये आंबेगाव तालुक्यामध्ये रुरल रिजन्समध्ये सुद्धा जाण्यासाठी वेगळी टीम 
डेडिकेटेडली आयुकाची आहे सो आम्ही तुमच्याकडे नक्की येऊ आणि यातल्याच कोणाला तरी एखाला तुमच्याकडे नक्की घेण्या घेऊन येऊ शकू थँक्यू सो दिस वॉज माय लास्ट स्लाईड सो यू सी वॉट एव्हर यू सी हिअर सेल्फ कॉन्फिडन्स क्युरिओसिटी क्रिएटिव्हिटी पेशन्स पर्सिस्टन्स these are the traits of a scientist these are not male qualities these are not female qualities so what's inside you what's in your brain doesn't really is not very different so you can see yourself as a scientist nobody stops you um so so we'll take questions from the audience yeah you can make your comments this is our first panel discussion so we would like to hear your feedback as well if it was useful for you so uh hello as as you said that uh, there should not uh, any kind of uh, bag school bags for uh, girls and school bags for boys so there should not be any type of different but in the school there are uh, separate uniform for girls and separate uniform for boys so should it or how it clothes are for comfort yeah but uh, isn't it making uh, gender difference i mean i i cannot speak for everyone whether and, and if i give an answer suddenly everything is not going to change but i can give you my opinion uh, for example uh, they have uh, if you see for the sports days what do they do they choose shirt pant for girls as well so what is the purpose of choosing a skirt for the other days what are we trying to achieve by showing that this is a girl and this is a boy i i personally don't understand the difference i don't see why there is need to be a skirt for a girl what it serves i don't know so i would have just chosen the same uniform if i were a school principal and had the this thing i would have chosen the same uniform for everyone <laughs> so this is something my sister faced so when she was in school she had to travel some distance and go to school and come back so it was really problematic to cycle for example by while wearing a skirt she would be like i would rather wear a pant and then you know a pant and shirt it's so comfortable you just travel it's it's, it's perfect but uh, for whatever reason the school wanted and that's a problem that's it's absolutely that's the reason why we bring it forward because the support system the teachers understand the children better they see them day in and day out are they comfortable sitting in the classroom are they comfortable doing things equally what whether they are a girl or a boy um, and that's what we would like to address i i think the that the point here is that you know people should have freedom to wear whatever they want school uniform is 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 may, maybe not a concept which i like but on the other hand this is there but on the other hand you may also like a situation where there is no uniform and people just want whatever they are comfortable with that may be a better model and maybe we will reach there at some point the thing is not just about the dress right i mean it is the colors etc do stereotype that is true and i can say that i we gave a, a pink cycle to my son and then he was worried that his friends are going to tease but nothing happens after some time it all becomes fine but on the other hand the point i think the 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 thing is much deeper it is not that if you use the same uniform this difference is going to go away because in fact a uniform is probably the easiest uh, change to make but the expectations of that 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 you know children are more important than science it may be but it may not be for somebody this part is very very difficult to change it is the person the the person who is involved concerned should decide what is better for me of course i may love children but i may want to I may love science more and that is absolutely fine and but this i am sure in this auditorium also there will be a large number of people who would be who would find it very difficult to believe and this is where the problem comes this we have to change anybody has any yeah um, hello uh, so i'm not very good with names so i've kind of forgotten everyone's names 
and my question isn't directly related to this topic but uh, the ma'am in the pink said that she works something regarding Lego so I was wondering if you could tell us more about that. Lego. Lego, right? Yes. Yes. So we have a stand just outside in Bhaskara and we have plenty of people to explain everything about LIGO. The people on stage, we are like one, two, three, four of us are from LIGO. <laughs> yeah, you can visit the LIGO India stand which is uh, just outside Bhaskara. So um, yeah, we are very are, much pro women, you see. Yeah, please visit so, the, the stand. Uh, yeah. So there's no discrimination. And the pictures that you see here, these are from our own labs here in Ayuka. So we have uh, students working with us and you can see we are not biased. So e everyone is welcome to come and equally enjoy science. And they are standing there. Yeah, they are there. Are the they are there. <laughs> yeah, they are poster girls. They are there. I think girls should do teach the self defense. Self defense. Because girls had to do up and down sometimes. So. <laughs> Everyone, Everyone should know self defense this, yeah. these days. <laughs> yes. My question is that I have to tell 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 that Answer. Doctor banna hai, so it's yours, your choice. And everybody around you, their duty is to support you. But the choice is always yours. But you should still ask the question that why I want to become, or do I really want to become? That is a valid question, but you should take the, make the decision. Yes, ma'am. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, first of all, our school is in a rural place, that is Paur Murshi side. And usually what happens, we are trying to make science interesting through experiments and different activities. But usually what happens, at a certain level, the students are taking interest, but at a particular level, it might be the family background that they are coming from, and they stop doing that. So as a teacher, how we can motivate them in order to get interest in that particular subject. Now, as per, uh, science has been increasing day by day because during our time it was not there but these students are getting very much interest in that particular subject so how we can support them now as we are finding you all over here we are thinking like our family members should also have supported us to be in this particular stage which we had not got so how we can give them this particular stage no, I think uh, one way to motivate, even irrespective of the family background, is to tell the students to uh, think everything they are doing, what science in il is involved. So like, I whatever they are doing at a given point, if suppose say, family member said that, okay, you do this, okay, there will be some science involved in that part. Like when they are taking water, when they are like, you know, like let's say everyone uses some kind of water pump. I can give one example. So they are how to take water, how to carry it easily. Every part has very interesting science involved. So that is one way to so, sort of forget about how my family is supporting or not supporting, whatever it is. But I am trying to, f my mind is focused in the science part in each step I have to do. So that way, then of course this is not the ideal solution, but that way you can at least you keep mo motivated. So this year for a model making competition, we, our theme was science from your kitchen. So we made both the boys and the girls enter the kitchen for once. So um, I think teachers can motivate them to go. So I think teachers are really important. And more than the family, it's the teachers who can motivate the children to pursue what they want to do. I will just add one po more point. So I, when I was in school, so some of m me and my, my friends were very keen to asking question. But uh, unfortunately, some of them were not encouraged that you should not ask that kind of question. I mean, not that kind of question, that so many questions about this. So I think we, what we really wanted, that teachers encourage us to ask more and more question to some, even if the questions are very naive, they are not probably related to our syllabus, but uh, asking questions and trying to find the answer by myself is the biggest motivation for joining science for me. 
So, uh, we'll take a last point from Siddharth. Yeah, I mean, how I can talk for myself. I was not interested in science for a long time, right? I, I wanted to do history or something. So, but it also helped me because my family was okay with me not doing something particular. I think what I also find is in our, especially with this, when I talk to my cousins, it's already decided like you have to do, like you have to get 95% and all. So that kind of limits what they can do, what they cannot do, right? It's very important to give children, also younger people, to freedom to do what they want and fail also. Yeah. At one, term, one point in my life, I was, it was pretty sure that I was not going to do anything in my life. And my parents still supported me. I think that is also important. The, ability, the freedom to do what I want and fail as well. And that's something that we really lack in our system, I think. Thank you. Um, we'll wrap up the panel discussion today. We have the next session, which is much more interesting, Mythbusters. Uh, so we'll, we'll prepare the stage for that. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, panel members. <laughs>